just been watching me play Become a Maths Whiz. I was having a go at the gold questions there. And this is just a quite a, a simple JavaScript game I've created to help my son uh, with his uh, bronze, silver and gold badges at his school. Um, they have these bronze, silver and gold badges and you can obtain one by showing competence in the, the relevant you know, times table uh, times tables for that relate to that badge. So he's got the bronze one, which is the two, five, and ten times table. It's quite a leap up in difficulty for for silver. Um, it's two, three, four, five, six, eight, and ten times tables plus their division facts. So you've got to be able to divide as well. I'll get to the code in a minute, but I'm not going to labour the point on this one. It's written in HTML with CSS for the styling and JavaScript runs everything. It's on one page, one index.html file, and the JavaScript is also included in that page. The CSS is in a uh, separate CSS file because uh, it's getting a little chunky. Um, I probably should have put the JavaScript in a separate one too, but whatever, I didn't. So if um, so, you can see here we've got uh, a slight gradient, blue to white. Um, got this nice big chunky font that's transparent with an animated GIF behind it with some stars and whatnot, just to add to the kind of wizardry uh, theme, if you like. Uh, this choose a badge to practice. Just makes it a bit more interesting having to, having a shadow and having an animation with a shadow showing it showing it bounce um, a kind of a wave pattern and then we've got the three containers here with a bit of box shadowing just to make it look a bit more interesting and three very small image files so the page loads dead quick and then whenever you click something you know there's no load time at all because it's already already there the JavaScript just deals with hiding and modifying what's already on the page so let's go for silver right in the middle there so as soon as you click that page is cleared and the, the heading at the top changes to a solid silver a solid silver text how many questions would you like 336 or 50 I'll explain um, I'll explain in a sec why <laughs> there's so many questions and that's why I put the option of just 50 and 50 is plenty even still you don't have to do all 50 so let's just choose 50 we can see the page changes again heading is still the the same but now I've got question one of 50 because I chose 50 questions nice big nice and big and bold here. And they've got kind of a calculator style input um, with hover over effects on, on the buttons, some coloring and, you know, a kind of blocky standard looking font, you know, for the calculator. So it's something that might be a bit more familiar to people. Certainly um, my son, you know, would, would use a calculator interface, calculator interface. Um, yeah, and especially if you're using it on a, on a touchscreen device, it makes uh, inputting the, the numbers um, easier. So here we go. You can <clears throat> you can't enter nothing. It won't it won't progress if you don't put something in there. Uh, so let's see one time. So let's do a few of these questions. Press enter. Yeah, you get a ding when you get something right. And you can see here, whatever you click, just gets inserted into the calculator screen here. DEL will delete the last digit that's been input. AC all clear. We'll clear everything and enter as we've seen. Um, answers the question. And you get the ding when you got it right. If you get it wrong. <laughs> you get the buzzer sound, so you kind of know you get a bit of uh, audio feedback as you as you're going along. Um, all the results are stored, so if you if you get bored, if you've had enough, like say 50 can you know it's still a lot, even though it's a lot less than the, the total. Uh, you click quick down here, so we've answered four questions, and that'll tell us. So we was on question four, wasn't we? We'd answered three, <clears throat> and that'll tell us that we scored two out of three. It'll show the results, the actual questions here, and the answers. Green ticks for correct. If you get it wrong. You'll have the red cross and it will show you um, the, what would have been the correct answer. Now if you click try again, it'll just go back to, to here. How many questions would you like? Um, if we chose choose badge, I'll take it, it just reloads the page and uh, you can choose a, choose a different one. Now the reason there are so many questions, like on bronze there are 72, and you might think, well there's 12, we go up to 12, so you know, that's one lot of 12, that's another lot of 12, that's three lots of 12, so 12, 24, 36, how come there's 72? Well, what I, what I have this do is ask the question backwards. So there'll be one times two, two times two, three times two, but there'll also be two times one, two times two, two times three. So it'll, it'll have the, the, the two, the five, or the 10 on both sides of the of the sum. Because the answer will be the same, but I wanted to get my son used to seeing it, you know, you know both ways around. Because that, you know, in real life, things aren't always orderly, are they? So it just adds an extra element there. The questions are generated randomly. So it won't follow the same order uh, either. So you don't know which way round you're going to get it. Now, two times two is obviously the same forwards and backwards. So there is that duplication, but what are you going to do? Okay, so is there anything to show you before, left to show before we go over the code? 
Um, I don't think so. I think that covers it all. So if we nip over to VS Code here, this is the index file, the standard stuff here um, that you'd set up a HTML file with. This is where I import the font for the the Become a Maths Wiz. It's called Luckiest Guy. <laughs> um, just a Google font that I've imported. And we set up some audio here, which we reference later in the JavaScript. And you can see that CSS does all the magic because Become a Maths Wiz is just in H1 tags. And then the CSS makes it look cool. Um, I'll cover that off in a, in a sec. But this pretty much is all the, the HTML, the static HTML. So not many lines of it at all. And it'd be even less if it wasn't the fact that I wanted the uh, choose a badge to practice to be in a nice wavy animation because each letter has to move independently. So it has to be within its own span tags. Okay. And then down here, this is where the, the three div containers are to display the three um, badges bronze, silver, and gold, and they're not hyperlinks. The image has a uh, an on-click you know, event. So it's listening, watching out for a, a click. If it is clicked, then the relevant function gets executed, so bronze, silver, and gold. Okay, let's have a quick look at the CSS. Uh, right at the top here, I set up some variables for different colors and different fonts, and uh, it's kind of good practice to do, but it uh, doesn't save an awful lot of time in this case. It's a very small, simple site. Um, we set up some various spacing and fonts the different uh, elements of the, of the page, of the body, um, P, uh, the margins for various elements of the page. So H1, this is where the magic happens. So we're using that lucky guy, luckiest guy font. Um, nice and chunky, nice and big, we've got spacing around it. The background image, well, we set the color to transparent. That probably should have come first, really, you know, um, if we're going through it in, in order. So we set the color to transparent. So whatever the image is will, will shine through. And as it's an animated GIF, you get that nice effect, that animated effect behind it. Um, and GIF's pretty small, so it loads quite fast, but we are at the mercy of however fast this site is running, but it's never caused me any problem. Cover makes sure that whatever it is that's being displayed through, whatever image, background image there is, it will fit the port that it's being shown through, okay? Uh, the calculator grid, okay, so that, this has to be quite rigid. Use a grid template to make sure that it's you know always three columns of the same width and the same with the rows. You know, so it's fixed. So that doesn't that doesn't expand or shrink as the page size does. But in my testing, it's always visible and usable. Even on oh, I've got an iPhone 13 mini, uh, so it's quite a, a small screen. So um, as long as you're not smaller than that, you're good. And anything above will be fine. And the this, the page is responsive. So. I just make this smaller. There you can see at a certain point this choose a badge to practice because each letter is individual. I didn't want I didn't want it to start wrapping around a letter at a time onto the next line. So at a certain you know, you get a bit of it there. Um, but at a certain point it will just completely disappear. Become a maths whiz because that is one you know block of text that will wrap nicely and there and the effect still still is still visible and doesn't break. And uh, the three boxes, again, when we get to a certain point, um, now here, there is a bit of overflow you can see, but in my real life testing, it wasn't an issue for me. So I, I chose the cutoff at this point where they will snap to a column and uh, you lose the box around it, but all still perfectly playable. Okay. Back to the code. So that's what the calculator, all this styling deals with the calculator. And then with the buttons, make sure the font is the right color and the, the hover over effect that you get, any box shadow, um, changing the color, yeah, when you hover over, a different font to make it a nice, just a bold, non-cursive font, so it's easily readable. Um, this deals with the containers, um, like I was just showing you there, the, the flex, we use a the flex option so that um, when it gets to a certain width, you know, that will disappear and the styling will change, so it looks okay on a, on a smaller screen. And this deals with the, the gradient at the top where blue fades into white. Um, I don't think I use the other ones. I did have a different gradient effect for each page, like the silver, gold, you know, to make it kind of tie in, but I felt that it was better just to change the color of the text and keep the uh, the gradient the same, the blue one. Um, and then this deals with hiding the, the chooser badge, the H2, basically anything, any H2 tags disappear when the orientation is portrait. Um, so yeah, when you get to a certain width where it's longer than it is wide, or higher you know, than it is wide, uh, portrait if you like, then that will disappear completely. And this styling all deals with you know, setting up the bounce animation, how long it's going to take, 
uh, ease makes it move, yeah, accelerate up and then slow down when it gets to the top. So it's not just mechanically moving up and down, you know, or just sliding up and down at, at, at the same speed. Infinite just means it won't end, and alternate means it will reverse. So it will slide up and stop when it gets to the top, and then it will slide down so when it gets to the bottom, and it just repeats. Um, the font was Titan One, although I've seen on other browsers it defaults to Comic Sans. If that can't find that font, which also looks okay, and it deals with the text shadowing, and yeah, the text shadowing and the okay. So each this applies to the first span tag, and then every child every subsequent span tag is a delay to the animation so that they're not all moving up and down uniform you get that wave effect and then this deals with the the shadow of the of the whole not just the shadow of the of the font the shadow of the whole thing when it goes up and down just to give it a, a 3d effect so it's quite a lot a bit of overkill but i like the result so i'm okay with that and that's that really we're now down into the javascript where i don't want to labor the point too much you can pick through the code yourself ask any questions you want in the comments. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've got it working. You've got some global variables here at the top and then everything else is pretty much in its own function and some of the variables are passed between them and passed between them so that you can keep score for instance and not lose a place in a loop and they deal with um, the correct answers and the wrong answers. And I've been quite lazy in that once I got it all working for bronze, I then um, just copied and pasted it for gold and silver and tweaked them rather than be clever about it and uh, try and do it another way you know it's sa save some save some space it's not particularly long anyway so yeah the most important thing in software development is getting it done getting things working um, as you can see here different functions for each of the buttons of the calculator and they just add that number into the display there's a big chunk of commented out code here because I wanted it to be possible to enter the, the, the relevant numbers by pressing it on the keyboard but it was causing issues with doubling up. You'd press a number and sometimes you'd get more than one of that number in the display field and it was causing problems. So it was nice to have, but the most important thing was that it worked and it was more likely that it was going to be used on a on a tablet and therefore having the, the calculator style input on the screen that you can tap each in, each separate number was, was more important. So I went with that. Um, so what I thought was going to be a pretty short video, I've, I've rambled on for quite a while. I would like to go into some more detail. Um, ah, you know what I will do. So if we look at the, let's go look at the bronze questions. So when you click bronze, this is what happens. It, re, it just basically changes everything that's on the screen already and changes colors, changes the text. So it's not loading anything. Everything is already here. It's just whether it displays it or not, depending on what the user, what the user selects. So we set up two arrays, one to 12 and then two, five and 10. So for bronze, it's gonna ask one times two, two times two, three times two, four times two, it's also going to ask the reverse, so 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, and then that, that's why we get the 12. Um, instead of 12, 24, 36, it asks them twice, so it's 36 times 2, 72. That's why it's such a huge number for the other ones, because obviously the other times tables include a lot more. So for silver, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10, and the division facts. Um, so the way it works is you've got those variables, those arrays, but we use the questions array and the answers array. So for the question, we are pushing in basically whatever that is there. So on the first loop, first go round in the loop, that would be um, one times by, and say, well, it would be two, one times two. And then we actually do that sum, store it in the variable answer, and then push that answer onto the answers array. So the question, the answers match. And then here, this is just the symbol for the division symbol, uh, sorry, the code for the division symbol, the HTML code. Um, so instead of choosing the forward slash, it's a bit more friendly to have the, the horizontal line with the dots above and below that everyone's kind of used to seeing, especially children, for, for div division. Um, so we actually do the division question. We, we get the answer that we just generated divided by the same number we used to, to create it here. So we've got the division question as well, and then we push that also onto the that question and that answer into the respective arrays. Then we swap it around. So we see you've got multiply by, but down here we've got by multiply. because so it doesn't matter with multiplication, does it? Which way around they go. Um, but so you've got the inverse of the questions as well. And same with the division, you know, instead of divide by, we've got divide <laughs> by multiply, if you're still with me. Uh, and then we've got a, a function here which shuffles the arrays. You, so you pass this function the two arrays, 
Let's go and have a look at that function. I pinched this from elsewhere and just modified it so that what it does is it takes those arrays, it takes the questions and answers arrays, randomizes them, but randomizes them simultaneously so that the questions and answers still match. <laughs> Otherwise, what's the point? And then it restores them in those arrays. So you never know what order you're gonna get the questions in um, each each time through. So I wanted the, the order to be random. And then each time a user enters their answer, it will check it against the, uh, the user answer, it will check against the answer in the array. Uh, if it matches, great, we play the sound and increment the correct answers variable by one. And if it doesn't match, then obviously it's wrong. We increment the wrong answer by one. And uh, we also, as well as, we'll be showing the answer with a green tick, but for wrong, as well as showing the red, you know, the, the question, the, the user answer and the red cross, we should show the correct answer. So some learning can be done.